Next up um, is Ben Hastings. Ben is with Dell EMC. Um, ben is part of is part of Dell EMC's Education Services leadership team, uh, and so that team is responsible for building a community of people who know how to use the products that they bought from Dell EMC. So um, and I know that there are hundreds of thousands of people globally um, serviced by, uh, by Ben and his colleagues. Uh, Ben's going to be telling us uh, how Dell EMC are, are looking at and perceiving the future of learning. So Ben, uh, welcome and uh, thanks for joining us. All right, thank you everybody. Hopefully we can hear me all right. Um, I don't have any spin challenges. I do know that I tried it once and they said it's okay to quit, so I didn't. <laughs> um, so that's as about as far as it's gone with me. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of the future of learning and how we have approached it with uh, our team. We kind of took a, a slightly different approach based kind of a little bit about my background and where I came from. Uh, we tried to focus more on, on the learner as our future. Um, and the reason for that is to really kind of make sure that when we look at the legacy of learning, from my perspective, this was my high school, elementary school, and kindergarten. Um, I never went to a formal school until I went to university when I was 17 years old. Um, so when I looked at the idea of having structured learning, uh, when I first walked into that uh, classroom, it was a little bit uh, odd. Um, I found out that the professors don't really like feedback. Uh, <laughs> and if you don't read the book like you're supposed to, you, you come pretty close to failing a class. Um, the other thing that I realize is when you are in an environment like homeschool, I basically prior to the internet, because you can tell by that picture, I'm, I'm not exactly young anymore. Um, <laughs> my brothers and sisters were my Google. <laughs> Um, and my uh, father collected a lot of books. Um, I would say easily we had a million books in our house. Um, every wall was covered. Um, that picture that you see up there was actually where an Apple and also a Atari 800 was, where I uh, learned how to program. And I got the Hello World, but it wasn't even existing then yet. I got to change colors from green to red to blue and do the go-to loops over and over and over again, which is quite exciting. Um, when we looked at the other pieces associated kind of with you know, my, my high school graduation, I would say, is uh, I lived uh, outside of Austin most of my life on a ranch uh, with my brothers and sisters. Uh, and you see from the picture there, by the time I was kind of high school age, I had kind of immersed myself in, in, in nature, and I just really kind of enjoyed learning what I wanted to learn. Uh, and I had to kind of go through that idea of transforming into a kind of a formalized learning practice. Um, one of the things, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that now, because from a learner's perspective, there was two sides of it. There's the side of what the company has to go through, and then also the side of from the learner. And a lot of times we forget about that. And when we looked at our philosophy around an LMS, we, we took an idea around what does the learner need to go through in this change. Um, so the future of learning, you know, we, we need to lo know our learners to adapt to the change. And adapting to the change isn't about you as leadership, it's about where the change is expected from your employees. Because they're coming in at a rapid pace. Uh, they already have an expectation of what they think learning should be. And a lot of times what you're still delivering for your stakeholders is what learning was 10 years ago. Uh, making it experiential. Obviously being homeschooled, I was intrinsically motivated to just kind of do whatever I wanted, uh, which really frustrated my mother because uh, <laughs> I really had no eagerness to read until I was about 10 years old. Um, and she fought with me and fought with me to make sure that I would actually, you know, read all those millions of books that were in the library. We have all these things, why don't you do it? Um, well, it was easier just for me to go ask my brothers or sisters. Um, and if I really wanted to know something, then you know, I would just go ask somebody. Um, if I had questions, I'd ask my dad, and he was uh, very knowledgeable. So 
I found conversation, which I heard earlier on one of the, the things there, was one of the best ways to learn. So I didn't do the standards, and I would just kind of wander around and ask the questions, and eventually I'd find out what I wanted to know. Um, and it wasn't until actually I got into the idea of VCRs, and I love movies, that um, I was not allowed to use a VCR unless I could read to TV Guide and program it myself. So I was intrinsically motivated <laughs> to, to read. Um, so that was kind of a transition for me. Uh, the latter part is keeping it simple, listen to change. Um, the university experience was true horrific, I mean, to be honest. Um, when you step into that classroom for the first time, and uh, I really did feel like this poor kid here with a stack of books. I carried all my books in my backpack. Um, I rode to all of my classes. I sat there, listened to the lecture, and I was sitting in the back of my head thinking, who is this guy? Why am I listening to him? And I would argue. Um, my first class that I joined was a history class, um, and it, I almost failed it. <laughs> and the only reason I didn't fail it was because um, I argued with him so much, I think that he felt if he failed me, it would reflect badly. <laughs> so um, I just kind of got passed by default. So I'll talk a little bit about, kind of as we go forward, I'll, I'll go relatively quickly here, is when we talk about knowing our learner, we have to also realize that kind of through that journey, and what I was talking about being a, a student and learning different ways, the progression of when my parents decided to homeschool the family, uh, it wasn't because we're a part of any type of strange, weird religious culture or anything like that. It's actually quite simple. My sister was extremely gifted. Um, and she was having anxiety attacks uh, in kindergarten because they had moved her up to first grade and then they moved her up to second grade. She could read by the time she was three years old and she was reading my dad's Wall Street Journal. Um, so what would happen is because the process was propelling her through the education system before she was physically ready to do it. So they decided to extract my sister from the situation, me being the youngest of five, I by default became the first child of Hastings School of Music. We had fire extinguishers and, and things in the room and escape passages throughout the house. Um, we became our own school. Um, so from 78 to 80, we had, you know, fire marshals would come through, check the house, make sure all the exits were free and that kind of thing. It was kind of interesting. Um, and we started to do a, a basically a decade of kind of learning from an experiential perspective, kind of a pedagogical approach. Um, by the time we started with university, it was not yet legalized, so there was no process. Um, there was an SAT, there was a task process, I had to go through an interview with the uh, school. Um, one of the first questions they would ask is, why? Um, <laughs> what's the reason behind it? Uh, so we had to kind of go through that. When I remember those experiences about knowing the learner, how did you know this stuff? A person asked me, well, how did you get to know mathematics? That's what my dad taught me. Okay, so how did you learn you know, how to read and write? My, my mom each other, right? But because there was not a process to intake, that my experience was not as yet recognized. That didn't happen until 1994, when the state of Texas made homeschooling legal. After that, the in, kind of internet revolution happened. And that's when everything became more of an expectation that you could learn on your own. Uh, and when we looked at the idea of how we want to structure, when I looked at this from the LMS perspective, I said we've got to kind of take that approach, is we have to make sure that we're going to recognize that you already know something. I'm not going to try to push you into a structure of 11 clicks to get where you need to go. 35,000 pieces of content that you can go search and wander around if you like. Uh, we had to reduce that down. And we call it, the, <laughs> strangely enough, I'm, not, I'm probably not the most expert from when it comes to uh, speaking but, and project naming, but we call it a three-dump picture approach. Um, 
we, we basically said, you're really only going to do three things. You got to take a class, you got to search the catalog, or you're going to look up a product. That's really the three basic things that you're going to do. So we flipped our UI and we focused it 100% on the learner. Now, that recognizing change and adapting, that decade it took for homeschooling to be recognized was about the same from the business. Um, the business did not like our three pictures. Um, there was a lot of reaction. There was a lot of fight. There was a lot of things where we had to go through and figure out what are the next steps and how can we keep the stakeholders happy, et cetera. So we had to go through and kind of organize some, a couple of other things. So the next step was then how do we make it more experiential? So because we made the change, we allowed people to understand what the next steps were going to be. The fight back to the business was we're going to allow you to recognize what people already know. And that will start with making sure that we're giving people the ability to go see what's recently released. We changed, we added a five star rating to say, hey, what do you think about the LMS? I remember when I first talked to my boss about it, he kind of raised his eyebrow. He's like, really? You're going to put that on the LMS? Um, it's like, yeah, why not? Um, we started out at 2.5, um, not the greatest. We call it a really simple thing, love it or hate it. Um, and about two years later, we ended up at 4.8. Um, and after we started cleaning things up and we started to make sure that we recognized how the knowledge was going to be acquired, we actually went back and understood what the next steps were going to be and how we could actually drive uh, those people to have some more experiential type of learning. So labs, um, understanding that if you've already taken a class, you don't need to take it, just take a test, do a, uh, other types of things like that. The other piece around there was we had to naturally address curiosity. Um, when you're looking at experiential learning, sometimes experiential learning isn't necessarily about how you want to drive that learning experience with your employees, but you have to give them the ability to just kind of go wander around and check things that they want to see. Um, MOOCs is a great example. Um, the things we're doing with the ecosystem as well, where you allow kind of communities and groups to get together and have a shared curiosity goal. Uh, but it's also, it also makes people be, kind of stand out more and, and gives them that ability to feel like they really have something as part of a, an overall kind of group or community. The last one is keeping it simple. Um, when I went into university, it was not simple. Um, there were stacks of books. There was um, you know, situations from a cultural perspective. Uh, you can imagine from just the ability to kind of engage with people uh, was a big challenge. Uh, socially, um, completely inept. Um, there was a lot of different things I did that I thought were normal, not really normal. I was uh, about 19 years old, I was in trigonometry class, and I had overheard the girl in front of me, it was her birthday, the next day. So, I thought normally people give birthday cards for the, for the birthday, so I bought her a birthday card. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to her that day, or the next day, and I saw the look of, who the hell is this guy and why he took the birthday card in class? Um, and then I first realized, okay, I need to go learn some social skills. Um, <laughs> so that was, uh, when I say keeping it simple, sometimes we forget there's some really basic things that um, when your customers and your employees and your partners want something from your company or from education, don't forget the simple things. The simple things, if not properly managed, like giving a birthday card, will put you in a weird place, right? So um, using systems like you have today and the system that you're thinking about using with an ecosystem allows you to be able to communicate those simple things out to a broader audience so you get a little bit more of a baseline and you can educate your teams. The other piece, too, is around uh, the love it or hate it feedback methodology we talked about. Um, give the learner what they want. Uh, listen to the feedback, because going forward, when you start to look at how you would like to organize your content, your students will tell you where they want to go. 
you don't necessarily need to plan this long-term grandiose strategy. They will tell you. Um, and when they tell you, look at what is the current ask and then pre predict where you think it's going to go. There was a great, a great quote from, uh, I don't have it on my slide, everybody else did, so I'll have to just blurt it out. Uh, somebody asked one time uh, Wayne Gretzky why he was considered the greatest, right? Um, and he said uh, he skates to where the puck is going to be. Um, so when you're looking at feedback, remember it's not about being the fastest, it's not about being the best, it's where is that feedback going to be? Because that is where your strategy is going to end up. So from our perspective and wrap up, We've done a couple things from our technology perspective of how we're going to the future and beyond. So from a wrap-up perspective, you know, using goggles, AI, um, ecosystem is an experiential type of environment. In the future, when you open up your phone um, and you have a service call on one of your products or you have somebody coming over for a meeting and talking about those kind of digital assistants, if somebody either pops up on your phone or it's in your, your sunglasses or whatever else and says, hey, you know what? Um, Raul's here, he'll be here in five minutes, he's five minutes away. Uh, that product that you like, that you picked up the other day, um, it's available at this store. I know everybody's got that special type of thing that they like, mine is bullseye, so the Cajun bull barbecue sauce, which I can't find anywhere. Um, so I had to order on Amazon, but if you go out there and you're in the future, you'll be able to say, hey, that thing you like is on sale, and you can go pick it up here. And that's where the future is, those are the things that you have to adapt to and figure out going forward when looking at learning is how can you address those things and make sure that they're available for everyone. And then finally, standards. This is kind of a pet peeve for myself is we have so many digital elements in this world. And my, uh, my ask of all the experts in this room is we have to define a, a Dewey Decimal System or some type of Library Congress model to manage our assets we lose assets at an alarming pace. And some things are really phenomenal. We talked about earlier uh, finding something on SharePoint. It was like the angelical moment. We found the video. It's here. <laughs> and you go back three weeks later, it's gone. Um, because we don't track, we don't measure. So big data is huge. Uh, obviously, from a Dell EMC perspective, we know big data very well. Um, and that's something that we are looking to pull in with our data links and things like that, that we connect, we attach, and we manage how our digital assets are being delivered and look at activity, because it's that activity that's gonna show you how well you're progressing. All right, thank you very much.